Greetings, I am Herbert Erpaderp, and in this video we'll be looking at the entries in the group build that has just recently finished over on my Discord server. If you are not aware, the topic was the second Derptopian group build, the basic premise being, build a vehicle that would be fielded by the armed forces of Derptopia, or Derptopia's most perilous enemy, the enemy. Simple enough. Ok, so let's get to the entries. In no particular order, well, alphabetical order because that's the way they were sent to me. Stop waffling and show us the models! Ok, first up, Arch Magus Dominus Neveron has decided to depict Buzzkillian vehicles. That's the enemy. This is an SU-39 Frogfoot, which I've always thought was a very silly and good name. These were acquired by the enemy through trading questionably distilled vodka with the Russians. Fun fact, in their desperate attempts to defeat the glorious nation of Derptopia, the enemy hired notorious Russian hacker Ivan Fortunov to hack the weapon systems of the planes using Doom cheat codes. The planes have unlimited ammo, but as the enemy failed to pay the hacker with tendies, it's the only cheat code these planes have. The Derptopian intelligence agency reports that underpaying the hacker will have hilarious catastrophic consequences. Archmagos says they decided to treat the enemy as a cartoon villain, and I really like that. The model itself is a 72nd scale SU-39 from Zvezda, and it's obviously been painted in the grey tones you might expect of something called Buzzkillian Forces. Very cool. Here's another enemy vehicle from Archmagos Dominus Neveron, and this write-up was so good I'm just going to read it verbatim. The enemy deploys various IFV-type vehicles to transport their troops, trying to counter the ambushes of the Derptopian Raptor Cavalry, which has been described by the captured enemy troopers as imbalanced pay-to-win bullcrap. The T-15 is the newest addition to this arsenal that has been borrowed from Russia. Also comes with the cheat grade of infinite ammo, however one was captured by the Derptopian Intelligence Agency for evaluation recently. For the operation itself, the DIA agent LARPing as Sean Connery era Bond had reported that the keys were left inside the vehicle so it was easy to steal it and drive it out of the enemy base as the guards were too busy using their phones. Evaluation of the cheat grade soft hardware added by the notorious yet underpaid Russian hacker Ivan Fortunov revealed that the anti-tank missiles fitted to this vehicle have a roughly 75% chance of self-detonating in the tube when firing, thus confirming the hilarious catastrophic consequences laid out in the DIA report on the enemy's Su-39 fleet. The model itself is a 72nd scale T-15 Armata from Zvezda. Graf Pudding's entry is a troop of Merkava 2s borrowed from the Israelis and painted in an appropriate camouflage. And a glorious camouflage scheme it is too. Extra machine guns were added for tank riders to use because what's better than tank rider armour? Tank rider armour that can shoot back. Rocket launchers were also added to relocate the enemy in all directions. I guess that's either by making them run away or by turning them into a fast moving fine red paste. These models are in 15mm scale from Battlefront, and I really like the camo scheme. Graf Pudding also submitted two entries. The second one is this pair of Cobras. These were initially deployed at night in a purple and pink camouflage, but the general staff noticed that they weren't visible enough. So the Board of Camouflage and Fearmongering designed a new type of night camo to test which colours can be seen well with low light conditions. It was decided to use the colours of a rescue helicopter because the enemy will see it and think it's unarmed. They will be trembling with fear when the rescue helicopters begin firing on them with glorious Derptopian rockets. These models are also in 15mm scale from Battlefront. This next entry from Hope for the Best is great. It's the Derptopian Raptor Riders. You thought they were extinct, didn't you? Nope, not in Derptopia where anything is possible. These guys are intended to be used for light scouting and crowd control purposes, and these are roles I'm certain they excel at. They may or may not compel said crowds to disperse, or they might do some biting and maybe a little bit of clawing. Who can say? The model is made up of 15mm scale Flames of War infantry figures mounted on 3D printed velociraptors, and the rigging and stowage is made from green stuff. A creative, interesting, and very entertaining entry indeed. From Kenny, we have this turret. This is the T-70-56D. I wonder what the D stands for. 
It's a borrowed Soviet T-70R turret, modified to have smoke discharges, a new upgraded gun, and viewports on the side. Ammunition is found on the inside allowing for better reloads. Such innovation. Moving the ammunition to the inside also allowed for more armour to be added to the outside. This turret is used on Derptopian police cars and helicopters. Lutantan, I'm not entirely sure I'm saying that correctly. Anyway, this person has entered this awesome thing. It's been named the BOHS, Brumba on Hard Steroids. There's a lot to this. It's described as a self-propelled heavy infantry support mortar slash paint throwing tank. It can fire two kinds of ammo, bubblegum, which due to its stickiness slows the enemy down, which in turn makes them easier to hit. It also fires paintballs. Derptopian scientists discovered that paint can dissolve the enemy and their materials. It works like a spy check, which is an important thing to do for security reasons. You might notice that the engine is uncovered. That's because it had to be super strong for sick jump related reasons. That means it was also hard to cool. Who needs to improve cooling systems when you can just leave the engine exposed to the cool, cool Derptopian air? This is a really cool kit bash. Some of the components are a Model Collect E100 casemate and mantlet, parts from Zvezda include mouse tracks, SU100 fuel barrels, a Sturm Tiger barrel, a turret from an M3 Lee, and a turret from a Matilda 1. There's an exhaust from an Italeri Panzer 4F, and stowage from an Italeri T3476. There's also stowage from a Tamiya Allied Accessories set, and parts from a Lewis gun also from Tamiya. And from a Dragon Panther G with diecast hull come the rest of the details, engine, hull, and tools. I really like this. It's not colourful, but it's right at home in the Derptopian army. Next up, from Methoscraft HD, something to go in the water. This is the experimental light aircraft carrier Derptopia, ECVL-01. It was laid down and launched as a German Dresden class light cruiser. Then it was bought and converted into an aircraft carrier by the unnamed nation's navy after the First World War, where it served for some time before being transferred to Derptopia. It retains the original paint job, which makes it look totally different from anything else in the Derptopian navy. After some years the carrier was sunk by torpedoes from an enemy submarine. Those bastards. After its sinking it was realised that an aircraft carrier built out of a light cruiser is a bad idea. The model is in 350th scale by Ravel. Methoscraft HD's second entry is another naval vessel. The MT-1 class missile torpedo boat, also designed by the unnamed nation's navy, hence the similar paint job to the light carrier. It was sent to Derptopia armed with a 203mm gun and a launcher for the Mark I missile torpedo, which works half like a regular torpedo and half like a missile, so the name is appropriate. This boat achieves a top speed of 70 knots. This helps it achieve the sickest of sea jumps. Cool. This model is built entirely out of parts from the bits box. The hull is a float from a Ravel 72nd scale float plane, and there's also an exhaust from a 72nd scale Panther. It's a nice creative use of bits box bits, and it makes me want to try something similar myself. Monol submitted this glorious beast. I will read the following letter pertaining to this vehicle. The Derptopian Excellent Research Program DERP, is happy to announce the finalisation of the development of their first Derptopian main battle tonk the DERP TNAP. The TNAP, totally not a panther, was developed on the basis of borrowed technology from a certain country's research and development team, but with various flaws of the original design eliminated. Among the greatest flaws were poor off-road performance, which our engineers adeptly fixed by simply attaching more tracks. Such an easy fix for a problem plaguing so many designs. Shooting tests with the original design revealed another big shortcoming, that it was simply not shooty enough. However, thanks to proprietary Derptopian wormhole tech, trademark, our engineers soon also fixed this issue by mounting a second main cannon in the turret. Additional firepower is provided by the hull mounted flamethrower, although admittedly our great engineers did forget to make a hole in the dozer blade for actually firing through. Luckily our great Derptopian soldiers are always willing to help fix mistakes and simply drilled a big hole in the dozer blade. We are sure that the TNAP will see plenty of successful use in the Derptopian forces and will absolutely not lead to lawsuits from man or the Wehrmacht. Honest. 
Kind regards, Monol, Head Engineer of DERP, Armor Division. This is yet another glorious creation. It's in 156 scale and is mostly comprised of Rubicon bits and pieces. Mr. Themo shared this aerial menace, a menace for the enemy. This JU-87 was borrowed by Dirktopian spies who realised there was a need for a new attack aircraft. After test flights and exhaustive research, it was adopted into the Dirktopian Air Force, but not without modification. The genius engineers of Derptopia added four extra 20mm autocannons and a giant MG42, because why not? A periscope was also added for better aiming. There's also a drop tank for increased range. Perhaps the most devious feature is the paint on the underside of the plane. It's painted like an enemy aircraft. This will obviously bamboozle the enemy and make them less able to retaliate. Sure, it might lead to some friendly fire incidents, and it's probably against some convention or other, but why worry about that when you can not worry about it? The model is in 72nd scale from Ravel, and I really like the pink and white camo on the upper half of the plane as well, obviously. Ratto's entry is this Derptopian Type P155, I see what you did there, GJ, for great job, as that's what this tank does. It's a light scout tank armed with a heavy 120mm gun, which, when you think about it, just makes sense. Highlights of the tank include said 120mm gun for self-defense, two machine guns, large hooks for easy turret removal and easy maintenance, two shovels, because two is better than one, and also more dig equals faster hole. The tank also holds replacement parts for the Panzer 1337, and that tank holds replacement parts for the Type P155GJ. This forces them to work together as a team, and teamwork brings glory to Derptopia. This model is in 72nd scale and is made with parts from IBG and UM kits. This is yet another really awesome and obviously totally sensible kit bash. Perfect for Derptopia. I really like the camo scheme too. It's so bright and fun. Great for bamboozling the enemy. Also, it says Dick Max on the side, and being a sensible mature adult, I find that quite amusing. Road Warrior John submitted this. The Derptopian LARV, which stands for Light Artillery Ram Vehicle, because we all know that ram kills are the best kills, especially when they follow a sick jump. This is described as a standard self-propelled artillery vehicle with improved close quarters capabilities, such as an explosive battering ram. Research has shown that one way to make ramming cooler is to add explosives. The commander of this vehicle is very enthusiastic about being driven forward so that he might hit the enemy with his sword, and I'm pretty sure that's the last thing the enemy want after being explosion rammed. Sucks to be them. The final entry is the Naval Guys Mark 3000 Spit Derp. The Spit Derp is effectively a Spitfire that has been heavily modified to accommodate two turbojet engines. This gives it advanced maneuverability and allows for exceptionally high speeds. This plane is armed with a 152mm gun for maximum derp. When in attack mode, the Spit Derp makes smoke, which will confuse the enemy into thinking it's nothing more than a cloud. It then attacks before any defensive actions can be taken, ensuring a glorious Derptopian victory. It also has air conditioning to keep the pilot nice and cool. Such luxury. Such is the glory of Derptopia. The base model is a 72nd scale airfix Spitfire with the engines from a B-25 Mitchell. Yet another really cool, interesting, and of course very sensible conversion. And that's all the entries. I'd like to say a very big thank you to everybody who submitted an entry to this group build. It probably won't come as a surprise when I say that I really enjoy these Derptopian group builds. I say that as though we've done a lot of them, and this is of course only the second one, but it's a bit special to me considering all of this lore and creativity has come from a silly joke I made while playing a video game and the community and myself have just sort of run with it. I think it's a lot of fun, and it's really entertaining to see different people's takes on everything. There will, of course, be another group build coming soon, but at the time of recording, the topic for the next build hasn't yet been decided, and voting for suggestions has not yet begun, but probably will soon. So if you're interested in suggesting a topic for the next group build, head on over to my Discord server, find the group build section, which is helpfully labelled group build, and make a suggestion. Of course, if you are seeing this a bit after it was made public, what I just said may no longer be the case. 
We might be in the voting stage or the build might even be in progress, but that's okay. You can partake if you want and make your suggestions when that group build is closed. You're waffling, Herbert. Mmm, waffles. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is if you want to partake in any part of the group builds, you'll need to be on Discord, and there's a link for that in the description below. Once again, thanks to everyone who participated in this group build. I really appreciate it. I also appreciate both of our group's buildsmen, Monol and Major General Bunk. Without their efforts, this and the previous group builds just wouldn't happen. So a hearty thumbs up to them. Heck yeah. If you've got any questions or comments, Discord is the place for the group build specific ones, and for anything else, the comment section below will do just fine. If you've not already done so, why not subscribe, follow, ring the bell, become a patron if you want to see my videos a bit early, or maybe just come say hi on Discord or Twitch. You can find links to all of my things like social media in the description below. And as always, I shall return soon, so until then, be excellent to each other, have a wonderful day, and thanks for watching. Farewell.